Skeleton Creek, Ryan's Journal, page 179. Sunday, September 19th, 1222 AM. It appears that I'll be sneaking out of the house tonight to see the one person my parents have forbidden me to associate with. The two of us will wander off into the woods at one o'clock in the morning and cut through a chain so we can break into a condemned structure before they burn it down. And meanwhile, her camera will be feeding the footage back to her website so that if we don't come back, the authorities can, what was her phrase? Oh yeah, find our bodies. Has Sarah lost it? What am I doing? If I get caught, my parents won't just move me into a new town. They'll ground me for a hundred years and feed me boiled beans for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the rest of my life. Even still, I almost wish I'd get caught. The alternative is definitely worse. The dredge at night. I'm not even there yet, and I can already feel the haunted presence of a ghost dragging its leg in my direction, asking me questions I can't answer. And this time, when the ghost of old Joe Bush comes for me, I won't be able to run away. Sunday, September 19th, 1230 a.m. Ryan, we're on. Meet me where I said at 1. Then we'll go straight to the dredge. Check the webcam from your computer. I'll send you the password in a separate email. And email me back. You should see me waving. Delete. Sarah. Sunday, September 19th, 12.33 a.m. I checked the site and saw her waving, and now I have to go. I'm confused by this turn of events. My hands are shaking, and I can hardly hold my pen. I know why I'm shaking so badly. It's the same reason why I have to go to the dredge tonight. I think old Joe Bush has snuck into my brain, because there's a nightmare I keep having. Every night, I have the nightmare, only I don't tell anyone. I don't even write it down, because it's a really bad one. It's the kind that if someone reads it, they think you're crazy. Sarah is in the nightmare. We're together on the dredge, going up the decaying stairs. When we reach the top, she turns to me and leans in like she's going to kiss me. I'm so surprised by this, I lean back and lose my balance, and I grab for her arm. The rotted railing breaks free behind me, and I can't let her go even though I try. It's like electricity is holding us together. We're two magnets falling. We're rolling through the air and she lands beneath me. There's a sound of smashing bones and then I wake up. Sunday, September 19th, 12.39 a.m. I just had to stop and think for a second. I remember struggling over the beginning of the story, rewriting it a dozen times. There was this moment not long ago when I thought, this is it, I'm dead. I remember how that opening set just the right tone. The reader would know that something bad had happened, but they wouldn't know what it was. Things came easy after that, but were confusing too. The Sarah nightmare bothered me. Now I feel as if I'm driving around at night in the middle of nowhere. I've lost my sense of direction. Did I have all the videos before? Have I been retracing my steps and she's already gone? Maybe tonight is the last chapter of a story I've already lived through. I'm going to assume, for the moment, that the nightmare of Sarah crushed beneath me is just that, a nightmare, and that all of what I've been writing is real. I'm going to make this guess, if because if what I've been writing is not the truth, then my mind is trying to hide something from me. If I've been making all this up and something happened to Sarah and it's my fault, then I won't be able to live with myself. I'm going to stand up and put all my weight on my one good leg and start down the darkened hall toward the stairs. When I look over my shoulder, old Joe Bush will be outside, staring through my bedroom window with the raven on his shoulder. He'll be watching me leave so that he can go to the dredge ahead of me and wait for my arrival. He's faster on one good leg than I am. When I reach the opening to the staircase, my heart will be pounding, and I'll look down and see that there is no light. It will be a long fall if I miss a step. My hand will be sweaty, and it'll slide when I hold the banister. I feel like I know this already, like I've done it all before. Words and sounds will tumble in my troubled mind. The crossbones. Are you the alchemist? Daryl Bonner. Gladys with her shotgun. Old Joe Bush. Is that my dad's name on the paper? A kiss. The sound is smashing bones. And hanging over it will be the one word. Gold. It's all about the gold. I know it is. Someone killed Joe Bush for the gold, and now Joe wants revenge. He won't rest until he gets what he wants. It will be a slow journey through a quiet house, and I have no choice but to leave. I have 20 minutes, and it will take every bit to sneak out of here. 
I want to take this journal with me, but I can't. It will mean I've left the story behind for sure and returned to the real world. I'm leaving it folded into my sheets so they'll find it in the morning if I'm not here. Please, if you find this, go to sarahfincher.com. Use the password to Gina Barons. There, you'll see what happens next to me and Sarah. I've got to go now.